Okay, so welcome to this next video in uh, the playlist on cancer. In this video, we're going to uh, continue our discussion of the cell cycle, and we're going to look at uh, the M phase of cell cycle, or the mitotic phase, or just mitosis. Right, okay, so the way I'm going to structure this video is we're going to start by just looking at the cell cycle in general again, just to keep it sort of keep it in perspective where mitosis sits in the whole cell cycle. Then we're going to look at mitosis in detail, each of the um, six stages of, well, five stages of mitosis. Uh, and we're going to uh, uh, look at um, the processes which underlie those. Okay, right. Uh, so, let's begin with the cell cycle then. So, the cell cycle is the process by which one cell can divide into two. Okay, so one cell splitting into these two daughter cells here. Right, okay, and it consists of five phases. So, there is the first phase, which is known as interphase, which is basically uh, a phase that can continue indefinitely. This is the phase where the cell is not actually dividing. This is the phase of the cell's life where it is, uh, it's quiescent, it's doing whatever it does. So, for instance, if it's a liver cell, it will um, be uh, extracting things from the blood and um, putting them into the bile and things like that. Uh, if it's a um, kidney cell, it'll be reabsorbing things from the nephron, etc. Things like that, or well, from the lumen of the nephron. Uh, things like that. It'll be doing what it's doing. Now, in order to create um, that, that sort of period of the cell's life, where it's doing what it's doing, but it's not dividing, that is the interphase portion, okay? Right. Uh, so, if you want to make a cell divide... Uh, you have to stimulate it, basically. You have to give it certain, um, uh, certain chemical messages that tell it to start the process of division. And there are different ways in which you can stimulate this. So, uh, we've looked at three different pathways. We've looked at the Wnt beta catenin pathways. So we've looked at how Wnt can stimulate uh, the movement from the interphase into um, what's known as the G1 phase. So, I'll just add this in. So the first active phase of the cell cycle is what's known as the first growth phase, or the G1 phase. So this is the first growth phase. And this is the phase in which um, the cell gets ready to divide. So uh, it assembles all of these pre-replication complexes on its origins of replication, which are getting ready, basically, uh, for um, the um, DNA polymerase to come and mount uh, on those um, complexes and uh, copy the DNA. So you're getting ready to replicate the DNA. Also, uh, in the G1 phase, you're duplicating proteins. You're starting the process of duplicating proteins. Because if you are going to divide, if you're going to go from being one cell to being two cells, uh, then uh, you need to somehow double the number of proteins you have. Because, for instance, all the proteins involved in respiration, you're going to have to double the number because you're going to need all of those enzymes in both of the daughter cells. So this cell needs to produce more of all of the essential proteins for, um, for the cell's um, metabolism. Okay, so that's what's happening in G1 phase of the cell cycle. And I was just telling you about the things that can trigger a cell to move from the interphase uh, to the G1 phase. So we've seen the Wnt beta catenin pathway. So if you stimulate a cell with Wnt, it causes a rise in the level of the transcriptional coactivator, which is beta catenin. And beta catenin then associates with either a T cell factor or a lymphoid enhancer factor and uh, mo modulates how that uh, transcription factor works basically and modulates which uh, promoter regions it's going to bind to and which genes, therefore, it's going to increase the expression of. And basically, what it's going to lead to is an increase in expression of uh, the proteins uh, that are going to um, move you from interphase to G1 phase. So the proteins associated with the origin recognition complexes, uh, sorry, the, well, the proteins uh, associated with the pre-replication complexes, which we're going to set up on all of the origins of replication, and the proteins that we're going to need to copy in order um, to um, actually split into two cells. So things like that. 
other pathways are you can have growth factors uh, which are going to uh, uh, be um, um, which are going to stimulate the cell and bind to growth factor receptors on its surface. And these growth factor uh, receptors then trigger downstream signaling pathways. And we've looked at two examples of downstream signaling pathways that growth factor receptors can interact with, namely the MAP kinase ERK pathway and also the PI3 kinase AKT uh, mTOR pathway. Okay, and uh, both of these lead to uh, the increase in uh, the transcription and translation of proteins associated with the G1 phase. So growth factor receptor pathways are put there. Okay, so there are lots of things that can stimulate a cell uh, into uh, moving from the interface to the G1 phase. And in the G1 phase, the important thing that's happening on the level of the DNA is you're setting up these pre-replication complexes, or pre-RCs as they're called. Okay, and these are uh, protein complexes that are set up on the origins of replication, and they're there ready for uh, DNA polymerases to come and mount and uh, begin the process of uh, replication. Okay, then we go into the next phase, which is S phase of the cell cycle. So this is the S phase here. Okay, and in the S phase of the cell cycle, what you do is um, you um, modify uh, the G, well, you modify the uh, pre-replication complexes to get them actually ready to fire, which is when a um, orig origin firing means uh, when a DNA polymerase actually comes along to that origin of replication and starts um, copying the DNA from there. So I'll just have a brief discussion of this. So uh, basically, let's say this, these two lines, represents an entire chromosome, basically. Uh, chromosomes are linear pieces of DNA. Now, if you want to copy this, um, this um, chromosome, then you could either set off a DNA polymerase enzyme from this side, and it could go all the way to the other side and synthesize complementary strands of DNA to both of the two original strands. So what it would do is it would take these two original strands, which I'll show in pink here, and it would synthesize new strands to, which are complementary to both of them. So it would split them apart, and synthesize these new strands which are complementary to them, and you'd end up with um, two, um, two strands, two double strands of DNA, basically. So here are the two original strands which have been split apart, and then it synthesized these new complementary strands which are complementary to each of the two original strands. And in that way, it's gone from uh, having, um, you've, you've gone from having one uh, double strand of DNA to having two double strands of DNA, and therefore you've copied the DNA. And this sort of uh, way of doing things is what's known as semi-conservative replication. So semi-conservative replication. And the reason it's called that is because um, in each of these two new strands of DNA, you've got one of the old strands, so one of the original strands, and then a new strand as well, so it's semi-conservative, i.e. what you don't have, let me emphasize what you don't have, is you don't have two strands of double, two double strands of DNA like this. You don't have the two old ones, the two original ones, on one of the new strand, on one of these strands, and then the two new ones bound together. That's not the way you do it. Instead, what you have is one of the old original strands with a new strand, basically, which is complementary to it. So it's not done in this way. It's done in this way. So it's called semi-conservative replication because each of these new, stra new double strands has one of the original strands from the original double, he um, double strand. Okay, right. And uh, actually, this is not the way that replication is done. Well, it is done by this semi-conservative way, but uh, with regards to a single DNA polymerase starting at one end and going all the way to the other end, that's not the way it's done because that would take too long. What instead you do is you have multiple origins of replication along the length of the chromosome, like so. So these are origins of replication. And basically, what you do is you bind multiple um, DNA polymerase enzymes to, well, you, uh, to the chromosome, and you bind one to each of these origins of replication. So you bind one there, one there, etc. And each of them will work 
along the uh, will move along the chromosome. So this one will move in this direction. This one here will also move in this direction, etc. So they all move in the same direction, and they're all doing this semi-conservative replication, but they're only doing it on the gap between the two origins of replication. So they each do a little portion of the chromosome, basically, and they can all work simultaneously. So uh, you can get the job done much quicker that way. Okay. So, in order for these DNA polymerase enzymes to, um, to actually um, work, uh, well, to bind to the origins of replication, you have to assemble a lot of proteins on these origins of replication, which the DNA polymerases can mount on, basically. Uh, and these pre-replication complexes are the start of that, and they're synthesized in G1 phase. Uh, then in S phase, you, um, you change them a little, and that's the work of the uh, synthesis CDK enzyme which is also known as cyclin A CDK2. Um, and it basically modifies these um, pre-replication uh, pre replication complexes so that they will then fire, and then you get origin of replication firing, so you start copying the DNA, and indeed you do finish. So in the synthesis phase, you replicate the DNA. Okay, right. Then, in the um, G2 phase of the cell cycle, G2 phase here, what you do is, again, you do what you did in G1 phase. You are taking part in duplicating proteins that you're going to need in uh, for metabolism in both of the daughter cells. So because you're going from being one cell to being two cells, you're going to need a lot more protein, basically. So in G2 phase, you're um, copying and duplicating proteins that are necessary for metabolism within the cells. In addition, what you're going to do is um, you're going to um, produce the proteins that are actually associated with first the nuclear division, the process of mitosis, and then the actual cell division, the process of cytokinesis. So you're going to get ready, basically, for the final phase of the cell cycle, which is this M phase in which mitosis occurs and also uh, cytokinesis occurs. So M phase consists of two portions, really, mitosis and cytokinesis, although cytokinesis is often added as an extra step on the end of mitosis. But mitosis, strictly speaking, means the division of the nucleus. Okay, so we have the M phase here, consisting of mitosis and uh, then uh, cytokinesis right at the end there in yellow. Okay, so that's uh, a review of the cell cycle. I just want to also um, draw uh, one last graph, basically, uh, which is uh, with regards to the levels of the different uh, uh, CDKs along the cell cycle. But I think we'll actually do that in the next video.